In today's tutorial, you'll learn how to blend gradients together in conjunction with using different blend modes to form a trendy abstract background. Perfect for those projects that need to look stylish. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Illustrator and get started. Start off by setting up the four following color swatches. I want my abstract background to be a blue theme with some subtle pink tones. Then select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle which fills the artboard. The artboard size I'm using is 1920 by 1080 pixels. And we just want to change the fill color to our darkest blue color. We also want to just lock the rectangle in its place to avoid moving it later. Next, select the ellipse tool and then just drag a big ellipse in the center of your document. Swap the solid fill color to a gradient fill and we want to change the gradient fill type to a radial gradient. Change the colors on the gradient so it goes from the lightest blue color to black. And then we want to change the blend mode of the ellipse to screen. Next, zoom out and select the ellipse and we just want to make this quite big and perhaps reduce the, the width of it and then rotate it 45 degrees. And then select the gradient tool and then using this uh, anchor point on the side, hold down the Alt key and then just drag the edge inwards a little bit, which just ensures that the fade on the ellipse fades away. And then don't worry about anything which overlaps or is outside of the canvas because we'll add a pipi mask at the end. Using the ellipse tool again, create two more shapes which are very, very similar. On the first shape, change the gradient fill color on the blue to the pink. And then on the second shape, change the blue to the greyish colour. And again, on both of these shapes, you want to select the gradient tool and just adjust the gradient so it fits more within the shape. Select the rectangle tool, then on the grey shape, just drag a rectangle over half of it. And then select both shapes, right click and go to make clipping mask and that should leave you with half an ellipse. Select both shapes and then change the opacity to 50% and then change the blend mode to color dodge. We're now ready to start assembling our abstract background. Now the way this works is we basically take these shapes, hold down the Alt key to drag a new instance of that shape, rotate it 45 degrees or you can keep it vertically if you wanted to. And essentially all we're doing is duplicating the shape over and over again, overlaying it in different positions until we get something that we're happy with. Once you've duplicated the shape a couple of times, then we can start introducing the the pink shape. So again, using the same method, hold down the Alt key and drag a new instance of that shape. Flip it 45 degrees and then increase the size of it, duplicate it multiple times and layer it on top of one another. And then just position it wherever you think it needs to be within the background. Once you've finished constructing the background, select the rectangle tool, click anywhere on the artboard and then create a new rectangle the exact same size as the artboard. Horizontally and vertically center it within the document and then highlight everything or drag a selection around everything. Right click and go to make clipping mask. And then what that'll do is it will just crop out all the parts of the uh, effect which falls outside of that 1920 by 1080 rectangle. If you do want to make further tweaks to the background, you can still edit it. So if you just double click to go into isolation mode, you can still go in there and obviously reposition stuff or duplicate different parts of the shape that you might want to edit. But ultimately, once you're done, obviously you can save that out as a JPEG. Or if you select the clipping group, 
and then go to edit, edit colors, and then recolor artwork, select the advanced options, click edit, and then you can create multiple color variations just by dragging the color wheel around to the different types of color. And you could essentially create unlimited variations of that background. That's it for this video. Hopefully you've learned something new. Feel free to share your abstract backgrounds in the comments down below or across any of my social media channels. If you like this tutorial, you might also be interested in one of these videos. And until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.